cockito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. So people concentrate on the thinking. The more you can think, the more you become more clever. But thinking cannot make you good. So our concern is how to be a good person. That's much more dangerous than to be a, a clever person. Clever person could be good, could be bad. So I think we have to go back to our heart. That's why we concentrate on spiritual education. And spiritual education is not, nothing strange. You don't have to live in the Buddha. You don't have to live in Jesus Christ. If you believe, why is it okay? But we concentrate on what is the most important element in your life. What is the most important element in your life? Please tell me. Very simple. Can you tell me what is the most important element in your life? Put your hand up. Yes? Love. Hmm? What did you say? Love, love. Yeah. You can live without love. Love is wonderful. <laughs> A lot of people live with hatred. Love is important, but not essential. You can live without love. If you have love, it's, it's good. But even love, if you love wisely, it's good. But if you love badly, become crazy, you know. Love becomes so much attachment, it could also be dangerous. Please. Food and water. Hmm? Hmm? Food and water. Food and water is very important. But you can live without food for a week. You can also live with, without water for a day. Yes? Bread. Breath, breath. That's it. Breathing. If you stop breathing for five minutes, you're dead. But have we educated ourselves on breathing? You start easily. When you breathe in deeply, you can see that it's different from you breathe in shortly. When you don't breathe deeply, you become a chitte. From breathe deeply, you can change. Ultimately, through breathing, you can change hatred into loving kindness. You can change ignorance into wisdom. You can change, you can change greed into generosity. So, simple. This is what the Buddha did when he became enlightened. And in, in those of us who are Buddhists, you don't have to believe in the Buddha. If you believe in the Buddha, helpful, fine. If you believe in Jesus Christ, yes, invite him to come in. If you don't believe anything, just come. One, two, one, two. That's simple. So I think that's why our education, we concentrate so much on spiritual. With spiritual, then intellectual become tame. Less selfish. The less selfish you are, the more you see things as they really are. When you see things as they are, and you become less and less selfish, wisdom and compassion go together. So you care not only for other human beings, you care for all sentient beings. You care for the trees, you care for the animals, and that, that, that's how the Buddha started. We regard the Buddha as the man with great compassion, than the man with great wisdom. And not only Buddha in, 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 in history of India, we can all also become Buddha yeah. through the deep breathing. Once you do that, you become less egoistic, become more humble, and yet you have potentiality to work not for yourself, for all sentient beings. I think for, for me, that is the, the essence of education. By that time, the American felt that imperialism was wrong, colonialism is wrong. So those who have white children say that we don't no longer need colonialism, we no longer need empire. But everybody needs development. That is, you must develop like us. We are developed country. You are under the rock. If you're better, you're developing. Like us, and because the American are very pow powerful, they proposed this to the UN. 1960, 
first decade of development. Ten years. This is the ten years, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Next, 1920, second decade development, much worse. Some of my friends said, the word development is a dirty word. You must clean your mouth with soap. Yet, a lot of people still believe in development. In this country, we have the first university of national development. It's all imitating the West. We want to catch up with them. That's why I'm very much with Bhutan. You don't need development. You need happiness. Great natural happiness. Not great GMP. You see GNH. So Bhutan is a small kingdom. But the king of Bhutan is very wise. He challenged the main thing. We should look more to Bhutan as others did. We always look to the West. I for me the West finish. I don't know whether you know Lara, a small place in India. And Helena Novoshos wrote a book, famous book, Ancient Future. You look to Ladakh, you look to Bhutan. People there are very poor by Western standard, but they're very rich. They have little, but they give you more, and they're much more happier. You see, we must always look for something else. Uh, Helena Novoshos also received the alternative Nobel Prize. Uh, like me, we also received our Nobel Prize. So, so her book, Ancient Future, mm -hmm. very, very powerful. So I think we have to look something <laughs> beyond the mainstream, always beyond the mainstream. <laughs> we older generation must listen to the younger people. No longer monologue for the old. We listen to the young, listen to the poor. As I said, we must listen to the three. Listening is important. In Mahayana Buddhism, our local says, have thousand years. He listens alone, he doesn't speak. If we listen to the young, the young may wish to listen to us. If you insist on talking to them, they don't want to listen. I give you one very concrete example. In this country, a young student, girl student, her father and mother came from China. She said to this country, he went to Thomasad University. After graduation, she didn't want to get a good job. She wanted to work for the poor. But she didn't go to teach them. She go to learn from them and collaborate with them. And she managed with all the people called Assembly of the Poor. Two million people in this country fighting non-violence against government. One young lady. She couldn't she even speak loud. In the non-Eastern people speak loud. She can't speak loud. But she behaved as if she were their daughter, their niece, and they love her. When they love her, then they listen to her. But mostly she listens to them. And she managed to bring the poor to meet the top people. It's a good Anand Panjara Chun, my generation, who was five to twice. Kun Anand told me, through Mot Bonida, the first time she knew, he knew about the poor. You see, the top people, now the patient, prime minister, ethic, they know nothing about the poor. Although themselves were poor when they were poor, but education wants them to forget the poor, forget their roots. So I think we need that. You see, young people like that. Through listening, we have friend Kalaya Mitra learn to listen, even to disagree, politely disagree. For me, I think that's the key. <laughs> die peacefully 
And before I die, I hope there are enough non-violent ammunition for the people, not only in this country, in other countries. And I hope when I die, I think the non-violent movement, under the mainstream movement, we become stronger and stronger. And I hope I will watch positive movement in this world, perhaps from heaven.